Welcome to Sam's Robotics Robotics Assemble podcast. So today we'll be interviewing a team from Israel, and let's meet our、uh, let's meet our people today. So I'm hosting, and my name is Lakshida Malapaka, and with me is Noam Ari. Sorry, if yeah, I pronounced it. It's fine. Yeah, it's Noam. Hi, Noam. Yep, I'm also a member of Sam's Robotics. And the three people we have from Israel are Jonathan, Ziv, and、oh, Omri. Sorry. Yeah. That, so, that's welcome, okay. guys.、Um, hi, Omri. So today we're gonna have a couple questions to ask them. See how it's the, how it's、um, functioning in Israel. How it's different. And let's get started. So. The first question I have for you guys is: How would what team are you from? Like, what? How would you describe your team? To any of you guys. All right. So, okay, maybe I can start. So,、uh, first of all, hi,、uh, I'm Jonathan.、Uh, I'm a senior at our team. We're RB sixty ninety from、uh, Binyamina.、Uh, Binyamina is sort of like northern Israel, I would consider.、Um, so, I think our team. We in the last few years,、uh, let's say from 2016, we've been、uh, going for, or at least trying to be the most professional we can get.、Um, we're really relying on transferring、um, information and knowledge from year to another, and I think we're we're doing we're doing our 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 job quite. We're doing a, our mission, or you know. We're doing what we're targeting to do.、Um, really good, and I'm really proud to be part of my team.、Um, I think that、uh, if it wasn't for COVID, we'd be able to get really, really up on the rankings.、Um, yeah, yeah. I would basically <laughs> present us as the,、um, yeah, maybe one of the most influential, inf- influential and leading teams in Israel. Uh, we are competing since 2006 or 2005, something like this, and we are constantly getting better. Since first in year twelve, basically.、And、yeah, we are constantly getting better and、uh, influence and lead teams all around Israel. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know both both of our teams were lucky to be able to compete before the Corona virus hit. What were your takeaways from your competition that you had? What did you think of your robots, the the game itself, anything like that? Um, wait, can you ask the question again? Yeah. So both of our teams were lucky to be able to compete before the season stopped this year. What did you guys think of how your robot did and how the game was overall? Oh,、um, I can answer that. So、um, we're actually super happy with our results in the first、uh, first competition. Usually, usually, it's like everyone sucks on the first competition, but usually、um, we suck very much too. And this year, we're like there was like. Many well, there were like a very tiny amount of problems. I would say I don't remember any major problems, except one where the, I think on the second、uh, on the second game our intake broke. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. You can you can tell the story. Yeah, the reason for、uh, yeah we had in our actually not the second one actually the first one.、Uh, so the first qualification or. Was a practice.、Uh, never mind. Anyway, we had our intake broken because、um, we use on our intake we use、uh, polycarbonate、uh, plates. So one of them we、uh, we are mistaken for、uh, acrylic.、Um, so yeah, we use the the wrong material. So、uh, because like they have different properties,、uh, polycarbonate can、uh, polycarbonate can be、uh, very.、Um, It's it's a bit like it's agile. It can uh, absorb um, a lot of a lot of heat.、Uh, it can take、uh, large forces、uh, because it can bend.、Um, so acrylic、uh, acrylic can do that. It would just shatter. So、uh, yeah, it basically exploded all over the field.、Uh, 
um yeah um so we just we had we had some spare parts so we just fixed and, that and we also um, managed to tear up yeah to, we also managed to tear up out uh, one of the shooting mechanism belts so for one game we we had to play defense which was pretty cool because we play defense with swear when i didn't see it i i didn't see it happen uh, like anytime So it was pretty cool and uh, but then after one game we managed to fix it and uh, move on yeah, yeah. That, really leads, oh. that leads to a very good advice actually that you should always have uh spare parts just like seeing seed extra parts from for, for uh for uh systems that we suspected that we, that would maybe break. Had, i think we had to... because if we didn't we had... do that we just would be uh completely disabled for the whole first yeah, but like for the for the build we had to go and buy one i think because we didn't have one spare because we didn't expect it to to be under so la- like to be under a uh, large pressure um yeah so uh, uh, one thing about it built is uh basically our our um vertical basically our vertical shaft the one that transfers ball from the index or serializer whatever you want to call it to the shooter uh, the same mechanism is connected to our climbing mechanism so we couldn't climb that game neither uh, yeah uh, we, we are very lucky to actually get something done those games uh, maybe it was a one or two yeah so we had a similar issue with our intake breaking right at the last right at the end of our game Our elimination matches and our first elimination match our robot got stuck in the side of the trench and it bent the axle that was holding together the whole intake mechanism and we didn't have a spare axle so we were playing defense with swerve as well for the last oh. two matches yeah yeah so we got lucky to have uh, problems happening on the first few matches because elimination is the worst time for us Or stuff mm-hmm. and uh, yeah actually yeah. in uh, 2019 we have we had the things where every, literally every finals our teammates break and that felt mm-hmm. that felt so uh, unlucky um, yeah. but it, actually all the problems always came to us almost all the problems on the first few games which is lucky so uh, mm-hmm. yeah no, we actually spent 2016 I think like 2017 uh, and on we had sort of like people start saying that we have a curse because um, in 2017 18 and 19 every time we go to a final we would lose um, so everyone in Israel said we, we had like the orbit curse and uh, that it went away when we actually this year won two competitions one in off season and uh, the, the like the first district. Well, that's it's, great it's, though it's not only that they said that it was it was literally real. like as soon <laughs> as soon as, as, soon as uh, the the people like the the people who, who, brought, who brought the curse as soon as they, we just won the finals <laughs> I, I was like big god is, is real I don't know <laughs> yeah so oh I know you guys shifted into swerve this year. And we've been yeah. in Swerve, this is our second year at Swerve. How was your experience working with Swerve this past year? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, I can talk about it too. Um, actually, I think I didn't inter- introduce myself. So um, right now, a little bit later. Um, I'm Omri, and I'm the head, the head of the academy in, in Orbit 690. Um, so the thing with the Swerve, after 2019, like there was all those... All teams that had as well we were like damn we, we want that too so um, it's a summer project we just um, me and in the, the past head of card yeah you call, call and blow and um, we sat together and we made it at swerve and so the main job about the swerve wasn't wasn't the cutting the cutting actually just a few weeks and from that summer until the After, until like the end of the season the, uh, the thing just didn't stop big, making more modifications and more improvement to the swerve 
like the really key thing in Swerve is actually the, the software. Yeah. And so that's what they just did it nonstop for a couple of months. And that's, that, that's why we got to this, uh, this goal of such a good Swerve. Yeah, Swerve is, I'm, that's part of my job now in our team is I'm the one that's leading the training on uh, developing our Swerve software and all of the swerve programming and it's so such a hard thing to get right there's so many things that you can go wrong in a yeah yeah so they like they were hard, hard, uh, working so hard on that but it died uh, yeah actually we had uh we had a swerve last year in 2019 because i think it would gave us such a huge advantage maybe even we were like we in 2019 we got we were um uh on darwin we were finalists so um i think maybe if we had swerve uh we wouldn't have such a hard time um uh, managing like we had a lot of defense on us uh, i think that's one of the major things that um we lost because of maybe if we had yeah. swerve i think we might be able to like we would have uh I uh, managed to go into Einstein. Um, I will blame it yeah. more on the broken teammate, but yeah, Swerve could help too, I guess. Yeah, we we had so, we had like our alliance wasn't we didn't feel we had such a great chemistry for our alliance, which was also a part of why it didn't work out entirely. Um, yeah, there there are a bunch of reasons. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> we can we need to talk about him now, but yeah. Yeah. But when driving the robot serve is so nice. Like it goes by really smoothly and everything. It's like very handy just then and there. So yeah. That's my intake. Yeah. So do you have any regrets about Swerve? Except for maybe not doing it a year earlier. Um I, I'm not sure because well the thing about Swerve, we, we weren't sure we we're going to use in 2020 uh, Swerve because it's really season dependent. Uh, if we, for example, had a, had, a, had a season with obstacles like in 2016, I'm pretty sure we would have gone on using a pneumatic drive like a tank. Um, it's, it's really season dependent, but like for 2020, it, it works amazingly, I think. Uh, and I don't think we have any regrets about using it, not in 2020. And also, I don't think we had enough time playing. We only had one, one competition to like a one district to try the, to try the swerve and to try a robot. So I'm not sure and, we really have insight. And basically that. I think that if, yeah, if we had a game with obstacles this year, so we could use the swerve next year. It's a, it's a really good uh, resource to, to your team to have. Uh, yeah. When we made it, when we made it, we didn't ne necessarily think we would use it in the same year because if it wasn't compact, compatible for the for the challenge, so we wouldn't use it. We we really hoped that we would use the the swerve because we worked on it so even, much. But, uh, even if you have a swerve drive, you shouldn't really like. Even like everyone's talking how like about how good swerve is. If if the season doesn't allow it, or like your your robot just won't fit with a swerve, just use a different drivetrain. Um, it is important and it can bring a lot of advantages, but sometimes it just like even if everyone talks about Swerve and how great it is, you shouldn't because well you would get less performance and it won't be it would be less uh, effective. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So what was so kind of related to this? What was some of like the most challenging things about your robot this past year? Because this is a cool thing that. Like to ask, what are some of the hardest um, things that you faced? First of all, the, the balls, like the the fuel, was so we, we had so much time figuring figuring how uh, figuring out how to properly like uh, move the balls like inside the, the robot. Um, that's the thing I think we most we spend the most time on. Even after, uh, even 
after we, we finished all the other concepts or all the other prototypes, we like kept testing this uh, this prototype of our serializer indexer, whatever, um, for like week a week more than the other all the other systems, because um, I think it's like it's the biggest challenge and the biggest fun also. Um, the fields that that were so hard to handle because of their high friction. Um, we got around it pretty good at the end, but uh, it took I a think, lot of time. Um, if, if I think that the, about... the, like the hardest thing uh, we had this season, it, it was the climbing mechanism. Like we had we had a, a sub team of mentor and two two students that yeah, like work constantly only on the mechanism because we had so many issues with the springs with the bearings with the ropes on that mechanism uh, like everything should have like been in the right place in like in the very right place yeah. in order to succeed so like we worked on this very hard and uh, we managed to also get around it, but it were it took it took very long to do it. Yeah, but I think you can say that on, on like every every system we design, um, like everyone worked very hard and spent a lot of effort and time uh, with with matters, and you know there were a bunch of people working on that system, but. Um, yeah, it was a it was a, a difficult aspect, but I I think the one that Omri um was talking of like maybe maybe managing the balls and controlling where they go, uh be- because of their uh high high amounts like uh they had a lot of friction, um maybe that was the hardest thing to to manage and come by um. Yeah, because they also tear quite a bit. Like, they if you go to competitions, you just see the balls are all teared up and you can see very inside, uh, which really, really damages the trajectory of the balls and, you know, uh, very sort of uh, aerodynamics. Uh, yeah, um, you can... Another challenge, like, it kind of connects. It's not only, um, like, designing a good system to to uh, transfer the, ball, the, the balls in the robot. It's also the, the, sp- the amount of time that software spent to get uh, the highest um, aiming accuracy as possible because um, the, like, the, thing, the way w- they do it, I'm not, a, I'm not a, from software, I can say it b- very briefly. Um, they just like shoot they they have a giant white uh, um, like squares board board of squares, and and they just shoot the balls many times and and slow mo like film it in slow mo. Then they they somehow figure out the parabolas. That's how they just just get the parabolas, get it into the software. I don't know how I can say just. Yeah, we're it. not from software, so we don't yeah. have much insight into that, but. Um... So, all I have, all I want to say is just it was a big challenge to get the accuracy accurate, and actually, a couple of months even after, uh, when when we got back from uh, from the first quarantine, so they kept trying on it and, and succeeded to get that. We're we're still working on our accuracy, and hopefully, when we get back to the workshop, we'll be able to continue that research because we have some new. New ways to new may new ways to improve our accuracy and precision. Another thing, yeah. just to add on to what you guys are saying, we also took slow mos as well to see how many balls we get into the little thing. And I remember taking slow mos and like, like redoing it and like loading the balls again and like shooting them again. Yeah. I remember when you for when you were practicing as well. We also took slow mos for our accuracy as well. Yeah, we didn't. Uh invented that that's it this is yeah. a thing a lot of, a lot of teams do mm-hmm. just a qu- quick question that i have that is so our next topic is do you think robotics in israel is different 
from like how we have robotics here in I don't know. in the United States? I don't know. I I don't know about like, about like the way the robotics in uh, the US uh, are like. Wait, I don't know how to say it as well. I will check. Like, yeah, I get. What do well, I would say? Right? Um, I think. Um, I think that it's really different in Israel. Is obviously, um, we are very we are more limited in our parts collection and and the parts delivery and all that stuff because, you know. Um, in we have to like you you can just order it to your house, but we have to like we try to call and in the season we try to call many people see if someone is in in America right now and uh, can like uh, usually like, hide it hide it inside the suitcase or something and we get like <laughs> yeah the way we... in our ways to get our parts because if it's like we try to. To order um, the the like the obvious things like shafts and bearing before the season, so it would come in in, in time. But there there are always like things that we didn't come, we didn't think so that we needed. So we just I, I, need to get I, creative. And... The, the only I think the that only the reason... robotics in Israel are very different. Also, like yeah. we the... we have so many things that are so close to each other, like geographically. So like we can help we can help each other like like Omri said with the parts if we are missing a part or uh, any other team missing a part uh, like uh, all the other teams all like many teams trying to help the team achieve part and get a part and we are very like strong community in Israel all the teams are very strong uh, everybody know everybody uh, and that's and that's really cool I, I love it yeah, Israel is like one, even even less than one country in the USA, I guess. Um, like, yeah. Um, yeah, but like, for example, uh, a few things. So I think the only reason we had our Falcon 500s in time was because uh, someone's parents uh, were, were in the US, so they were able to put it in their luggage. No, uh, um, I yeah. think that... Falcons. No, we didn't get them with a delivery. I think we get them. We ordered them in 2019 or something. No, I didn't think so. I think we had a parent bringing them. Oh, we should check. Oh no, no, no! In the IRI, I think they got it. Maybe. Oh, maybe they did. I can't remember. But like, I think um, I'm I'm not sure because like I I I yeah. am. Like I used to talk to a lot of teams from the US about how it's going over there, but I think the 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 main difference for a lot of teams uh, in the US uh, to the ones in Israel is that a lot of, uh, at least from my understanding, you usually like in the US you have usually uh, regionals and uh, instead of uh, full districts. Um, so we have a lot of chances getting into the into the into the championship. Um, before, and for example, before we had the districts in 2016, only three teams from Israel each year went up. But now we are like 12 teams from Israel each year coming. And like again, I I don't know the difference really because uh, yeah, yeah, you're a bigger country, but you still have smaller communities uh, and you know first teams that are close to each other i would imagine so um so i really don't know out of curiosity so some of the teams here we do like scrimmages between we get like six teams uh, go to uh, one team's like workshop and they have a full field in yeah, practice actually, you guys have something similar every in year, israel every, yeah we like, do every, yeah yeah every so year they, we organize like, like a thing called regional like pre-regional it from the days we had regional competition and uh, we host it in our gym. It's uh, it's like the whole night. Uh, we stay awake and we, we do scrimmages. We invite teams from all over the country. Yes, it's an all-nighter. Yeah, it's a whole nighter. It's like it's uh, one of the scrimmages we do. It's, it's the most uh, uh, like uh, many teams come to this event. And we have also scrimmages with 
teams yeah. from our uh, area. It's uh, really common. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. This year, actually, before before the season, before the 20, uh, 2020 season, um, we collabed with a couple of more teams in Europe and we built um, a field, like just a field that would uh, that would work for 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 every yeah. year because it's the same size and overall the same concept. Yeah. Yeah. The, the inside of the field. And uh, we also uh, we also did a lot of games and uh, like uh, a lot of games there before the for practice. Yeah, shout out to seventy thirty nine EXO, which yeah. like <laughs> was our uh, like yeah. we, uh, we we built this field together. Yeah they hosted the, so they, the we field. helped each other a lot. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Is it, so you guys have a nice community around you that you probably have a nice like robotics community with all the other teams as well. Well, that's yeah. nice. In your I guess own you, team, uh, I want to ask if you have like a similar thing inside uh, Washington. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're in a city called Bellevue, which is next to Seattle, and there's five robotics teams from Bellevue. So even in COVID, we we are talk to each other all the time to help each other plan and to help each other with whatever we need. And in addition to that, we have Jack and the Bots and some other teams just like 15 minutes away. And they and Royal Robotics has a field, so we practice there as well. Yeah, all the not, teams actually. around, all the teams around us are really like friendly. They always help us. Like if we don't have parts during the competition, they're very like they're very right there. They're always giving and they're like, we just have a, like a nice community around us with all the robotics teams, so, whether or not we're uh, going against each other. How, how common is like the first thing in your schools? Right, in, right here in Israel, um, I wouldn't say it, it is very common. We have like... Yeah, we have about 70 teams in Israel. Like yeah. the, the, the closest, the closest team that we have like nearby, it's like about 25 minutes driving. So yeah, it's not yeah, we're a bit sparse, um, but we have a few in the area. Like um, I think they're called Artemis, and we have uh, G3. And uh, those are uh, the closest. Uh, Amos uh, is the closest. We have um, so we have we have, um, so almost every single high school has a team. So like all um, um, so mostly we have like. Example: If a district has like five high schools, mostly all of them have teams. So um, it's actually really common for us to have FRCs. So, like, if a high school has a robotics team, it's most likely an FRC team. Yeah, that's that's another main difference, I would say, between Israel and America. Yeah. No, you were saying. Something. Yeah, most high schools here have a FRC team, but if they don't, I would say. 90% of those who don't have an FRC team have an FCC team, at least in our area of Washington and everywhere I've been. So like almost yeah. every high school student has an opportunity to be in first, which is really great. So in Israel, mostly like if you don't have an FRC, which is, you know, not very uncommon. So you would have FLL teams. We have FLL everywhere. Like it, yeah, it's FLL more, is everywhere. Yeah, it's more it's more cheap. It's less expensive, so yeah. you can just yeah. But it. but if they don't have a FRC, they probably don't have the FTC. I would say we have less. FTC is more new, but like it it came uh, like a couple years ago. So we have less FTC. Uh, FTC is actually more yeah. We were like before we were on FRC. We were on the like we were rookies on our F FTC team. Uh, which was 2018 before we could get into the team because we start like on 10th grade FRC. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we have FLL teams as well. So in our elementary schools around us, in our district as well, we have 19, 19 or 18 elementary schools and most of them actually have FLL teams. So we mentor them and we go around and help them for like STEM nights or like if they need help just in their like scrimmages or anything we we go ahead and help them so yeah. we we are we have a lot of connection with fll teams so that's one thing in our community as well um 
another quick question is, what sub teams do you guys have in your teams? So you probably have CAD and engineering, but what other teams do you have? So we have CAD, we have like construction or manufacturing. Um, we also have software and we have uh, electric, uh, like we have- That's a new team. Yeah, electronics. Um, cool. Yeah, but like I may, I'm not sure if to consider Arduino, um, like- Arduino, Arduino is inside electronics now. Um, yeah, it's part of electronics because it's sort of like it's a mix of electronics and yeah, electronics is a new team. We usually we before like in before twenty nineteen, we had like like people with it's their job to do um, program Arduino or people with a job to to wire the robot and everything. And we just like if they were scattered teams. And we just say, hey, let's let's collab them together to one team, which is like a little bit of everything they do, except CAD. They do like they also do like uh, manual we work and many, also software. Many sub teams, like we call them sub team because like because like they are not connected to the robot, which is kind of like the main part in in our team. So we have like. Yes, yeah, so we have a secondary team, which is the the more correct name. Uh, like we have a, a community team, which I am in, and prizes team, which right the prizes I, I'm also in. We have a media sub team. <laughs> we have a financial sub team. I, I'm, uh, I'm in media. media. We have a scouting team. I'm in scouting. The thing is that yeah. everyone. Should everyone is supposed to have like their main uh sort of like sub team and the additional one which would be logistics, uh media, um, um scouting, um prizes, community, etc. Um yeah. So it's actually really similar to us because we have a engineering sub team which has like mechanical, um, build. So it's all it all depends, and then we also have like programming and then imagery and business. And then we have, now we have a competition sub team, which is for our competition. So like if we need scouting or like how the competition is gonna go. So we have, it's actually really similar to you guys. We have around yeah. the same thing. And but like the, people the can, people, the people in competition are like also in uh, engineering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. And same thing to do with, um, I think, same thing to do with drive team. So if you're in like maybe engineering, you can still be in drive team. Or like if you're in business, you can yeah, still be in engineering. So it's Wait. like a lot of people are in multiple teams. How many team members do you have? I think we have close to 50 to 60 overall. Oh yeah. But only about, I would say only about 20 to 30 do anything. Like full active harsh. numbers. Yeah, yeah that's so... Last year we were about thirty three, I think, uh, and it was like we are a lot. Uh, in twenty nineteen <laughs> we were twenty five, I think, and it felt yeah. alright. So yeah, we we are actually talking quite a bit about that subject of like how many how many team members it's like the the correct number for your team. And we, yeah. and we, I think most would, in our team at least, would agree that between 25 and 30 is the, is the right amount that would, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you would manage to uh, sustain and actually create a, a, a proper robot and also manage it in competitions uh, that includes, uh, for example, enough people for scouting, uh, which I'm sure Omri would be able to elaborate more than I do. Yeah, but on the other hand, we like don't want to to not uh, to not get someone in the team because maybe, well, like only because it will be too much. So it's like yeah. really this conflict. If this like just a few days ago, we accepted the new the new freshmen and um, they all they all got in, which are a lot of people. I don't remember how many. Actually. So yeah. how are you guys? No, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, in a, in our grade, for example, not everyone uh, not everyone were accepted. So, it's like in the last two years, uh, for the like the the, the new new team members from twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. So, 
those guys all got in. Um, so it's like yeah, I feel like in, in the last few years, like in the last two years after after we entered, um, like in our year, some people didn't get in. I remember, but mm -hmm. then like I feel like the, the freshmen are much more like professional and ready. Yeah, for sure. And sorry, guys. That's making a really hard time on, on selecting who gets in and who's not. Yeah, How just gonna throw out, yeah, go I'm just going to throw out there that we have to take in everyone that comes in because we're a school team and we get a lot of our money from the school. So we can't say no to anybody in the school that wants to join our club. So yes. that's one thing that we do. So we have like FTC and FRC. Yeah. So yeah. In, uh, it's like robotics, like... Uh, so, subject of school. So if you don't get if to the FRC, you go to the FRC. It's not. And there are many, many, many people that. Yeah. Oh. So How do you guys? There are many people that that study like robotics no, in go, our go. in our school, but don't want to be in FRC because of the time it takes mm -hmm. from your life and and the the like the pressure. So mm -hmm. it's it's common uh, that you see people that it's... haven't entered the FRC team, but they have FTC and they have uh, other projects. Yeah, that's why I guess we have like not so many people, but everyone are doing stuff because if someone, if someone wants to be there, he wants to learn robotics, he doesn't have to because he can go to the FTC. Or even if you're a singer, you just don't go to both, you just don't have to go to neither FTC or FRC because. You already did them two, uh, two years of competition, and that's enough, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. How are you guys recruiting members since it's COVID and there's not a lot of in-person or like getting people like saying, oh, come over here. How are you oh. recruiting those members? So basically they just come because, well, we only recruit um, team members from our school. Well. It, that was the case uh, since I remember. Um, so we they usually just come. We have enough people um, that want to get in. So I, I hear that question or that sort of like discussion quite quite a bit. And we, we don't really have that, uh, not sure if they call it a problem, but uh, you, usually people just come because they're like aware of what we do most of the times we have a lot of we had we had a lot of uh, people in uh in middle school that are in fll and ftc so they know what we're doing and they are quite a bit so we were able to get in and like basically 10 people per year yeah, yeah but during right now the thing we did is um we just for like my team CAD, we just continued continued uh, think with the freshmen on on, like, on Discord, and uh, the only team that got us disabled was was the the manufacturing, the construction, building team. I don't know how to call it in English. Yeah. Um, because well, they, they can't build up and they need to do manual work. Um, but that. They made a little bit of a hard time for, for the the team heads because, like, uh, mainly for the the, man, the manufacturing team leader, uh, hard time deciding if who he gets in and who, who is not getting in because he yeah. had, like, three meetings with them, four meetings with them maybe, but uh, in the end he got. Uh, Get got them all, all in. And we just said if, if someone doesn't want to be there, he would uh, mm -hmm. himself. For us, for us, since our club is connected to our school, since um, our robotics team, so, um, and a lot of people are new freshmen that came in this year and they don't know a lot about what clubs to join. So um, we have to do a lot more outreach to them and talk about. Um, There's, yeah. yeah. There's a big difference here. Our school, I think, has 50 to 60 clubs and activities that kids can do. So it's a lot. So we have to reach out to the kid. We have to reach out to people because there's so many things and we need to kind of like stand out, which is a really big 
Yeah, that's, that's a big difference actually between generally Israel and America. We don't have clubs. I don't. I guess we have like yeah. you need to 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 uh, when you when you go to the tenth grade, you need to pick two subjects. I guess it's like club, but yeah, just um, yeah, just pick two subjects. But we don't have. They're like, just subject yeah. are ch- subjects on on the on the weekly. Um, yeah. Like the the like regularly hours. It's not after school or yeah. something. In robotics, it's six days because we ha- we have a because... final in robotics, like a final final test or like. Um... Yeah, it's very it's very robotics. It's like it's like the only subject that is. It's like the way you well, like the way they teach us is more like America. That's why it's so weird to many to many other students in uh, Israel because. Um, no one stays after the, the, the uh, like hours of school. You just go home and do homework and stuff. And in robotics, it's like so different. Um, and then like, why are you staying so late after school? And I'm like, I don't know. It's not like I'm learning. I'm, I'm cutting. And they're like, what? And I'm like, no. I'm like drawing stuff on the computer in 3D. And I was like, why are you doing? That? It's fun. So I feel like that's. Not, I I thought about it now because uh, I we said it that that's the way that robotics is taught in our school. Um, it's a, a very American way, I guess. But we all have that, a lot. All the other subjects are just just like any other subject, like math and stuff. I'm Just, going to quickly translate that from to a little bit more of American school. So like in Israel, you would choose kind of like two subjects. You would do like an APs in every year. So that's kind of like how people can think of it. So robotics is one of those classes that you would take. It's one of yes. your electives slash AP classes that you would take. But it's so not, it's not like in every school. Right. Like, you guys uh, do... Oh. Even to many schools, many yeah. teams in Israel, it's weird that we study robotics. In many schools, it's sort of a club. In Israel, but uh, yeah. like yeah. in our school, just, uh, every every student that uh, learns robotics has the opportunity to be in the FOC, FOC team, and only the only students that learn robotics have that opportunity. Have, have that opportunity. Yeah. 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 So it's more like a class type orientation than yeah, a it's club. exactly it's just another yeah. class that you have to to pick. We have like fifteen options. And you have to pick one, and that's why we have the easy alternative. Because a, a lot of people want to learn robotics. It also to, in the army to get a job, whatever. Yeah. And um, so a lot of people want to learn robotics, but don't like want to spend their whole life on that. So they mm-hmm. go to the FTC. It's also and, a big time commitment as well, since like yeah, I know that's people. A, that's the thing. I know people on my team that stay up till like eight o'clock or nine o'clock sitting and working on the robot. Like no one's one of those people. They stay up and they like work, they like program, they work. And then they have like four hours of sleep during the competition. And we like, we're just like falling asleep by the end of the competition. Yeah. Yeah, I think at some point um, in cutting week, the the latest I stayed up, it was like, or something and I didn't even cut it anything we just I just went uh, waited for a uh, for ride home because our uh, our uh, LinkedIn wanted to want to finish something and he was like I'm not going home until I finish something. like okay yeah, so we just yeah, yeah. sit there for like two hours and watched it and I yeah. think at some point we just started like we made a circle and tried started throwing the, the fuels at each other. It was a weird night. That's the, just the kind of stuff that happens during the season. I mean, it's if it's competitions, everyone's busy. Like, no matter who it is, everyone's scrambling around everyone. And you can't even sleep during that time as well because you're so, like, into the other work you're doing. So yeah. we can definitely relate to that. Yeah, I guess all the for sick things can relate. Um, that, that's something that... Just exactly the same, I guess, all around the world. Mm-hmm. So, what is your plans for this?
coming up year? It's a good question. Uh, we <laughs> we don't know That's yet. Tricky. <laughs> That's a tricky question. Uh, we kind of we kind of trying to figure it out. Um, we have this Israeli event going where each team is gonna like everyone that wants gonna present their and and uh, idea. We're gonna present their uh, their suggestions to a game because we figured out that. First, probably want to be releasing a, a really game, and uh, we really want to have a season. So, the, like, the thing is that if 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 first want released on January on on January a new game, so do um, something Israeli local, and if that would wouldn't uh, go, like, wouldn't uh, happen. So we just do something in, I don't know, a cool project. But we definitely want to do something um, also, not only for fun, because we're in the FRC woman, we want to like spend, like do all nighters, all, all January. That's what we love. <laughs> but we also need to like, um, like don't stop this moment information yeah. that like started like a few years ago we started to gain this momentum to become a better and better yeah, team and we don't want that to stop so we need to like do um close to a real season as possible yeah we have to try to i mean we're trying to do a real season as much as possible but we can't meet in person until february at the mm -hmm. earliest right now for us yeah, we just got out of a quarantine. Like there was, a, I think, a few weeks of a full quarantine. Uh, we still aren't back to school, and I don't think we will be for like um, a couple of months. I guess February too. But we just got uh, got uh, like yesterday. We got um, an appeal to to work. 10 people in the in the workshop and like 10 people and a mentor and i yeah. guess that's that's the start so yeah it will be better that's um our team we've been doing um like meet like google meets calls all the all over summer and from last year as well since like we stopped it and so now we're like getting back to the hang of it we're finishing up our tasks we're starting off and we're, we hope that we can come back soon or later but like even our schools are not letting us come back in until next semester which is january end so possibly february but we can't we don't we can't really say anything right now because how tense it's getting here and since the weather is changing everyone's just like it's just drastic change and then schools and then the workload yeah the way i don't know go you one thing our team is doing is we're actually starting a CAD team this year. In previous years, we didn't really have a CAD team. Oh, really? We had, because we had maybe one or two people from our mechanical team, our build team, that knew how to CAD. So this year, they're training everyone and teaching them how to CAD so that they can be able to do it in future years. So that's one thing that we're taking advantage. Yeah, I want to ask something. Um, yeah. What's the, the point of, of all the wood? Oh, so <laughs> so it came back from at the I think the very first years that our teams competed, they went with an all wood robot. I think because of cost, but I'm not 100% sure. But and it just stuck. So every year they we've just been doing more. They've just kept using wood up until 2019. Where, or 2018, where they started to have problems with all wood, and that was power up. So they started tra to transition into metal. But it was basically because, hey, it's cheaper to manufacture a robot. We're not a team that has a very high budget compared to all the other teams. We don't have our own CNC. We don't have anything like that. So we're able to laser cut stuff from our, at our school, and we're able to do that at our shop. And we just continue with using as much wood as we can. So this year, we had a metal robot with just wood panels on the outside to make sure it keeps keeps the wood look. 
And so, um, all the other teams know us by our wood. So they're like, oh, you're the team, like, St. Terbotics, so you're the team that has wood. So, like, all the other teams, if you go to competitions, they'll always recognize us for that wood. So, like, it's just been a year's thing. And we make sure to put wood on our robot. Like, this year really we cool. put a little panel that said our name on it. So don't you have like problems with the reliability of woods? I don't know. The the holes are getting bigger or something or, or just breaking. That was before I was on the team, so I'm not hundred percent sure. But mm. I think that was part of the issues that they had in twenty eighteen where that was kind of like weather transition, but So this year I saw you had the wood too. So we just said wood on the outside. Just a little piece of wood uh, on the outside. Just for uh Oh, yeah, that's, nothing, that's nothing actually very nice. Yeah. Normally, yeah. the wood, like, normally, I think, like, this year, like, last year's robot, it was just, like, our name and then the sponsors. It was just a little, like, emblem that we put on. So it wasn't, like, structure wise. It was just, like, for our design. Yeah, it's, it's like our gimmick. That's nice. Yeah. So in 2019, what? we had a full wooden chassis, basically, with a few pieces of 80 uh, 20 to hold it in place. But by the time we got to off-season competitions, that's when I was able to join the team. They had, uh, the, the, it started to cave in and it started to fall apart. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we transitioned yeah. into a more metal chassis frame. But we still oh, use our, we still use our old um, wood robots for like practices, for like trainings, for the drive team as well. So um, some of them actually work really well. So. Yeah. It's like handy. extremely good for prototypes actually. We like we use wood like on the first half of the season. We just do wood. The only place where there is not wood is on the final robot. But all the prototypes on the thing are wood because it's very easy. Um, actually don't have a, a laser or something. I like I saw yeah. it. So um, yeah. we used to see in sea wood, which is I yeah. I don't think it's very good for the lands of the people manufacturing it, but I, I, I think it would be fine. Um, yeah. So, I was asking, so you, you said you didn't have any CNC or something. Yeah. Do you have CNC parts of your robot, or how do you... So, we CNC'd only our intake this year. And we went to our school, they have a CNC there that we can kind of use, but we don't have the best relationship with our school teachers. <laughs> so, yeah. Or actually, our school mentor is our French teacher at our school. And mm -hmm. we have all of our mentors that know about robotics are from companies next to us, like Microsoft. Yeah, like in, in our school, like all of our mentors, except we have like one teacher. One robotics teacher, which is the the class, teacher. but he, he, he doesn't really matter us a lot. He, he mainly focuses on the FTC uh, and the FL because we are more independent. But all the mentors are like just parents of, of parents of alumni from the of the team. Yeah. We have a lot of That's... people from our team, from like Microsoft, like some of the mentors of the children. Not children, the, the students, yeah. their their parents, um, Boeing, we have some Boeing, we have some Microsoft. So we have like yeah, you're a really good close relationship. You're in the Boeing factory. It's in Everett. Yeah. Everett? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. one in Everett and there's one in Renton, which are both half hour away. But Microsoft yeah, so... is about five or ten minutes by foot from our workshop. Yeah, you can practically walk there. there. It's like a couple blocks so away. So we don't have yeah. that really much. All our all our teachers are just parents of, of people in, yeah. the, in the teams and they're like they're working on like local very known companies um, but they're really helpful and have a lot of knowledge which is amazing. I love them very much. I have a quick question. How do you guys do team building activities? So like since now it's online, how do you guys like collaborate with each other how is it like, it's a great question actually um, so we it's, a, it's a new role on the team it's like bonding uh, head of team bonding something like this and uh, basically uh, it, uh, it's uh, it's a male this time so he tries to to bond the team to help the team bond it's something that we work hard on and uh, 
Uh, last year it went like I think really good. We had a good team bond. Uh, this year it's hard. Like we have a good team bond between like the 11th grade and the 12th grade, but like the 10th grade, the new members. Uh, I know some of them like because I mentor them or because they are brothers and sisters of of friends of mine. But uh, it's really hard. We try to to talk in the in the Discord. We try to. Mm -hmm. We're actually playing a lot of Among Us. <laughs> So it helps. It, it helps the team bond. <laughs> yeah, we we just made when uh, we just made a a Discord channel with like uh, every teams. We called it like by the names of the real rooms we have in the workshop, um, and we just, uh, like before the season, like the, the fir for, first four month of the year we usually uh, meet up every every um, like two two days in a week and we try to maintain that as most as possible in, in discord so we meet up on um, on mondays and on thursdays um every week for like a, a four four or five hour session uh, except except the, the the like manufacturing team, which uh, I, I said they're kind of disabled right now. Um, so my team, we cut regularly on SolidWorks as as we as we uh, would have done like in the workshop and software or like also software ring, I guess, <laughs> regularly. And so except the manufacturing, everybody uh, working it is similar to regular um, because just uh, very much, it's like not very much manual work, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's nice. That's really nice that you guys are team building even if it's kind of hard to like meet up in person. Yeah, it's yeah. very, it's... Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know we did similarly over the summer. We tried to play games like Jackbox together as a team, trying to even get some mentors in there, try to get some involvement in that. Well, we, well. we played uh, a couple of days of Among Us with our like lead mentor. With like 20. Uh, how how old is Tom? It's really fun because it, it's, like, it's like very, we have a very good bond with our mentors, I would say. Um, except of like the 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 main ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, even our team, we have we have a good bond with our team as well. Since like, and we like roast each other. We're like we like have jokes with each other during the game. We're like, oh, you're you're that person. You're gonna be killed. You're the alien. So it's like <laughs> we have a lot of fun, and it's just like we joke around a lot. So it's like really like. It's like family, honestly. It's like you can make it family. Like it's very easy. Yeah, and it's, that's you're always that's the chill. About FRC. So we're gonna try to wrap up up here. What do you guys? Let's try to end up with. What do you want to say about like your outreach events? Because this is like one of our big outreach events. Is our podcast? What do you guys do to reach out okay, to your community? So, uh, and stuff like that. We we try to do things that our team will be good at. Like we are not trying. Like we know that we have like FLL alumni. So we're trying to help the FLL as much as we can. And our team uh, is good at, like, at basically building robots. So we help other teams. So like, for example, we have a, we have a, new, cho we have, we have a new YouTube channel that's called FLL Helpers. Uh, so it's a bunch of a a FLL. It's a, <laughs> shout out to FLL Helpers. It's a bunch of a FLL alumni from our team that uh, give ideas of like building robots and uh, we also like in the first uh, lockdown uh, we we combined with the uh, MA5951 uh, uh, and we made a, a three-year seminar uh, for teams from Israel uh, uh, and uh, like in our local community we basically mentor teams open new teams and uh, uh, doing uh, science and uh, technology te technology festivals. 
uh, mainly in the election days, which we happen to have a lot of in Israel. Yeah. So, so really remember... shout out to FLL or FLL helpers. If you have like just yeah, this they are really amazing. It's nice. <laughs>